Hey guys, this is Zach from Motocrane, and in this video, we're gonna go through our latest upgrade kit for Ultra called Heavy Lift. Now, we developed Heavy Lift specifically for our customers running larger stabilized heads like the Movi XL, Aerie SRH3, and even the Flight Head Mini. And what it does is it increases payload capacity from the standard 55 pounds up to 65 pounds for taking advantage of larger lenses and camera packages, as well as larger vibration isolator components. And how we've achieved that is by including various components for structurally reinforcing Ultra for dealing with that added payload. Uh, the first module that gets upgraded is the Ultra Isolator. And heavy lift includes reinforced air shock mounts for the front and rear of the air shock, as well as steel axles for the damper and U-joint. The second area that gets reinforced is the fulcrum area of Ultra. And heavy lift adds a vertical brace as well as lateral braces for increasing the rigidity between the booms front and rear. Uh, the third area is the connection between the turret and the base. And by adding these heavy lift shims, which are included in various sizes, the connection between the turret and the base becomes much more secure and rigid. So now that we've walked through these components, let's get into installation. We're first going to install the upgraded heavy lift components into the Ultra Isolator. And the first thing that we're going to do is the roll axle. So first, I need to remove my original aluminum axle that comes standard with Ultra. And I'm going to take two 5mm hex keys and loosen the M6 fastener that holds the axle in place on both sides. So now that I have one of the fasteners out, the axle pushes through so there's the standard aluminum axle there. This is the steel unit that we're gonna be putting in. So we're gonna install the new axle in the exact opposite way that we took out the aluminum one. So I'm gonna take this and push it in from the front side here. And this should just slide in, giving it a little bit of persuasion here, in to the original spot. And I'm gonna take my M6 lock nut here and uh, just holding one side. So with a 10 millimeter wrench here, I'm just gonna grab onto that M6 and then torque this down to spec. The next part that we're gonna reinforce is the pitch damper axle. And that's gonna come out in the exact same way that we removed the roll axle. Five millimeter hex key on both sides. And this should just pull so now I'm taking the steel unit, just slide this right through, and then install the M6 lock nut on the other side. So the next components that we're gonna install into the Ultra Isolator are the upgraded air shock mounts. So first, I need to remove my front air shock mount, and I'm gonna do that by removing my two M6 fasteners on both sides of the air shock, here and also here. So now my front air shock mount is free, but I still need to remove the rear axle in order to remove the whole assembly. So now that I've removed my rear air shock axle and freed up the front mount, I should be able to pull the air shock assembly out of the isolator. So now that I have my air shock assembly removed from the isolator, I'm gonna remove the front axle. And that's done in the same way as how I removed my rear axle. So now I can remove the air shock entirely. And to give you a point of comparison, you can see there's much more material here on the heavy lift version. And now we're gonna be removing the rear air shock mount. So I'm gonna remove those two flathead M6s that are securing the mount to the isolator. And once I have that free, that just pulls away. And again, as a point of comparison, to see the difference in robustness between the standard air shock mount and then the heavy lift version. You can see there's much more reinforcement and also you can see one is mounted via two bolts and the other is mounted four bolts. So now with my standard mounts removed, I can install the heavy lift components. First is gonna be the heavy lift rear air shock mount. And that's gonna sit right on top of the clevis of the isolator and installs with the same size M6 fastener that you removed. 
Once I have the rear mount torqued to spec, I'm gonna add the front air shock mount to the air shock assembly. And I'm just gonna lay this down into the mount and then install my front axle. And I'm gonna put in my M6 lock nut. Again, just taking my wrench here. So now with the front air shock mounted to the air shock, I have an assembly that I can slide back in place. Now, before I run these fasteners in, your heavy lift components are gonna also include the heavy lift badges. We're gonna put these in just like that. You wanna make sure that the heavy lift badge is installed with the tapered side going forward, and this follows the natural taper of the isolator. So this side right here, this dimension, is actually slightly larger than this dimension. So just make sure that this is installed this way and not the other way around. I'm gonna repeat the same process on the back side. Now with my front air shock mounted into the isolator, I can get the rest of my assembly connected with the rear air shock mount. And all I'm gonna do is lift this to the right angle where I can actually get my air shock and my mount aligned. So with my rear axle installed, I can then add my M6 lock nut. And now with everything torqued to spec, that completes the upgrade to the ultra isolator. Now we're gonna move on to the middle and rear booms. So the next pieces that we're gonna be installing for the heavy lift upgrade kit are the vertical and lateral brace mounts onto the middle and rear boom sections. We'll start by placing the upper mount onto the top tube of the middle boom. And then I wanna make sure that this is the appropriate distance away from the fulcrum. And uh, as instructed in the operation manual, that distance is 217 millimeters from this face right here. So I have a ruler right here and I'm just gonna make sure that this is at the right distance. And now once I have my upper mount in place, I'm gonna take the lower section and bring it right underneath. And while I'm supporting this, I'm gonna add the four M4 fasteners that secure these two pieces together. Now I don't wanna to torque these fasteners yet because once I get my booms mounted and the vertical brace installed, I wanna check for alignment. So I might make slight adjustments just to make sure that they're centered as well as that the vertical brace is not cocked to one side. Now once I have my vertical brace mount loosely installed, I'm gonna install my lateral brace mounts. Now these parts are the same, but how they function is they get flipped and they fasten to each other. And so you can see there's provisions here for the two lower boom tubes. And I'm gonna start by placing the upper section onto the lower boom tubes and confirm my spacing. So now that I have my upper lateral brace mount just set on top of my lower boom tubes, I'm gonna lift up my boom and set this one underneath it for fastening. Once I have them in place, I can add my four M4 fasteners on this side, as well as the four that are mirrored over here. And I'm not gonna torque these M4 fasteners until I have the other four installed. Now that I have the M4 fasteners installed on both sides, I can torque them. So now that I have both the lateral brace mount and the vertical brace mounts installed, I'm gonna double check my distance and then move on to the rear boom. And this process is the exact same as the middle boom. We're gonna check our distance on top for the vertical brace mount, get it in place, add the lower mount, and then move on to the lateral brace mounts.
One of the nice things about the heavy lift upgrade kit is that once the vertical and lateral brace mounts are installed, you can decide to use the braces as needed. So if on one shoot you're running a Ronin 2 package that's completely within the 55 pound payload spec, you don't need to run the braces. A week later, if you get handed a Movi XL with a big camera package, you know that you're prepared with these mounting points and the braces can be added as needed. Once I've completed installing my heavy lift components into the ultra isolator, as well as my vertical and lateral brace mounts onto my booms, I'm ready to build my ultra as normal. I'm gonna start by putting my ultra base onto my speed rail, and then I'm gonna put my turret onto the pedestal. I'm gonna add my two M12 fasteners on one side only as usual, but before adding the other two M12 fasteners, I'm gonna add the largest heavy lift shim that I can in the gap between the turret and the ultra base pedestal. Again, this is gonna take up any excess gap and make a much more secure fitment between the two modules. Once I have the ultra turret fitted to the base, I can now add my rear and middle boom sections. And at this point, I can add my vertical and lateral braces. Once I have my braces installed, I'm gonna to check to make sure they're centered and perpendicular to one another. Once I've confirmed fitment, I can torque down the M12 fasteners and proceed with the rest of the build. So now that we have our heavy lift upgrade kit installed, we can take advantage of larger camera package possibilities like what we have set up here, which is our Movi XL plus an Ingenue 25 to 250 in Airy Mini with full fizz from Cine Mechanics, uh, and also a Flow Cine tranquilizer with a couple of passive plates. And this whole setup here weighs about 64 pounds, which is completely within spec of the heavy lift kit. So we can push this whole setup to the limits of what Ultra is capable of on rough terrain and high speed cornering and all of that. So if you guys have questions about the heavy lift upgrade kit for Ultra, make sure you get in touch with us. Again, I'm Zach from Motocrane. Thanks for watching.